Hi everyone. So before we start the session, let me introduce myself. This is Krishna here and I'm working in IT industry for close to 15 years and I worked on multiple Unix related technologies right from Python, Perl, Unix shell scripting, Ruby, all that. And apart from that, I also worked on data science and ML and recently I started working on cloud computing stuff. So today's topic is data science for beginners. So this is going to be our objective for today. Uh, we are going to learn about what is data science, why we need data science, who is actually called as a data scientist, and how problems are solved in data science, and what are the different components of data science. And this is introduction training, uh, so there will not be any hands-on. I'm just giving heads up to you. So let's start with uh, the first concept. So what is data science for you? So let me tell you a very simple definition of data science. So data science is all about study of data. So first of all, when you say study of data, you might be thinking why we need to study data. There should be a reason for it, right? The main reason for studying data is in order to understand what data is telling you about. So when you when you say data science, you need to understand the study of data is to understand what data is telling you about. When I say what data is telling you about, it's all about what is the insights data is providing. Let's say you've been given a COVID data set and you've been asked to analyze what actually causing COVID issues, then that data from that data, you should be able to infer what actually causing it. So that's what about data science is. So data science is more about study of data in order to analyze, interpret, and conclude what data is telling you about. That's what data science is all about. So as you can see the same thing and why data science need to be, I mean, we need to worry about is we are living in a world where data is like flowing like anything. You know, it's like flowing at a very high rate because we have multiple technologies across the globe. People use Apple devices, people use smartphones, people use tablets, people use laptops, mobiles, whatnot. There are different technologies come in that could communicate with each other. The more the technologies get started booming up, the data also flow at that rate. That's why data science is very, very important because we need people who can analyze the data and tell us what people are talking about a particular topic. It could be about you know anything about whether a particular contestant will become a president or whether a particular you know opinion about a what would happen regarding employment in particular country anything of that sort so all this you can easily obtain information when you have when you know how to analyze the data provided you're being given a right data set to provide some conclusions out from it and who is basically a data scientist? The guy who does all this data analysis part, who does all this is called a data scientist. And one more thing to call out, data scientist is not an easy job. It's not like a general software developer job where you just learn coding and uh, you say, I have developed the product, I'm done. It's not like that. Data scientist is a mix of multiple skills. You need to be good in mathematics. You need to be good in business. You need to be good in the computer side of things as well, which is information systems. So these are all must for data scientists. That's why the data scientists, if you see why they are paid higher than the development roles is because of this reason, because they wear multiple hats, not just one kind of skill they ever of. So what would be the role of data science? So if you see the role of data science, if you look at from this perspective, why they have to worry about business, why they have to worry about mathematics and Computer science or computer programming, which is related information system that you guys might have idea, but you might be thinking why you need to have a context of maths and why you need to have some information on the business side is the reason is like what exactly data scientists do if you look at it. So these are the things which you have put it a, I mean like a, on a deeper sense, but I would tell you at a high level so you can understand things. So let's say you've been asked to identify what is the employment rate across the globe. I'm talking about employment rate. That means how many people every year getting employed let's say there are one lakh people just an example one lakh people coming out from the college you have to tell me out of that how much percentage is getting employed how much percentage is not if they are getting employed that's good but if they are not getting employed the reasons for that now this data how you obtain you have to look at multiple data sources right okay 40 percent you know about the number also cool so it is like you have to tell about uh, multiple things so you have to get the data from multiple sources right from Facebook WhatsApp. You can put the survey anywhere, right? All these social networks puts data in different different ways. You should be able to collect data from it. That's one part of data scientists. It's called data collection. Once you collect it always remember that the data whatever you're collecting will not be you know in a form where you can easily start working on you need to do some kind of 
pre-processing which is what called data cleaning because there could be errors in the data there could be some inconsistent data there could be some kind of errors also so all this cleaning has to happen which is called data pre-processing or data cleaning after that is where actually the data analysis starts and once you understand what data is telling about to show to business that particularly the ceos of the company or the product managers of the company you cannot show all the programming side of things because they don't understand it right they are not techie guys they, they don't know about all that right so what they actually want to look at it something which is easy to understand so that's where what will happen is they actually try to represent the data the data scientists in particular using some kind of graphs or charts which is called data visualization that part when they represent people can easily understand so this if you look at for the survey problem you can see from starting to ending how from collecting the data to how we provide the insights entire thing is done so this is the data science life cycle and this is like just like a software development life cycle you say you can say for any data science project this is how the entire flow goes once this happens to automate things or to get the analysis done automatically in the future the ml things comes in so this is all comes in so the things i have covered here if you look at the processing cleansing verifying is all the part of the data science thing and uh, there are other things like optimizing classware this is all part of the ml which happens after the data science is done i mean the data science life cycle is done including this part also okay so it's a multitude of things so this is what i just told maybe the terminology might be different so when i say collecting the data for a given survey what is the employment rate that is what the discovery part is where you collect the information first of all you identify from where to collect the data then you start collecting it once you collected the data preparation which is what i said data pre-processing or data cleaning uh, once you pull the data this is where you start cleaning it to see if there are any errors if there is any inconsistency in the data if there is any missing data if there is anything which you need to fix all that kind of sort of things happens here once this is what happens that means your data is ready and you start analyzing that's where you decide okay once the data science is done here there are two more phases missing which is about data analysis and then the data visualization stuff once you do all that that's where you plan to build a model model is nothing but a program a program which has ability to automatically not only analyze the data and it should be able to generalize the pattern from the data and at the same time it should be able to predict what's going to happen if there is a new data given so all this it should happen so this is where you decide which model to pick that means out of different different machine learning programs based on your problem structure you identify which machine learning program to pick it once you pick it you start building using it then you actually operationalize it when i say operationalize putting pipeline and all so that it happens automatically then you communicate results to the business or whomever that's what generally happens here okay so discovery we covered like getting data from multiple sources like the data source could be web servers social media census data set or any online sources through apis like that and the data set looks might look something like this it's an easy data which is semicolon separated and once data gets this is the data pre-processing guys the data cleaning part you can see the inconsistency missing values all the fixes has to happen here once this kind of anomalies these are all anomalies or mistakes or some kind of inconsistent data you can see there are errors all that need to be fixed and once this cleaning and all is done then you need to identify okay what i need to do in order to do the next step that means which tool i have to use that's where your sql r or sas will come once you do it then you start putting different kinds of graphs in order to understand what data is telling so based on that you decide how to proceed next which is called the edf part of it which is exploratory data analysis and these are the common tools available today in order to build a model and python is one of it so you can choose any one of it but generally the most preferable thing is python because it's a simple language but you can choose any of these models it's not required to be python alone okay now once you build the model so this is one of the machine learning algorithm called decision tree and decision tree model looks something like this where you build the model using whatever the problem have been given once you build it you operationalize that means you could some kind of pipeline and all so that it happens automatically once that is done like i said you started showing your results in the form of graphs to business so that they understand what actually you analyzed that's where it ends up so now the question is when you have different data machine learning algorithms how do you choose which one is the right one to do it one thing it's mainly based on the experience sometimes based on the problem you can immediately say this is the algorithm to fit but to generally give an idea you know for the problems like is this a or b something like whether this or that that kind of problem you go for classifications algorithms 
and uh, something like anomaly detection if you want to do it there are anomaly detection algorithms and if you want to measure in terms of how much or how many you have regression algorithms and if the data you don't know how to do it because there is no output date labels available and you want to organize it some way that's where the clustering algorithm comes in and let's say you want the algorithm to figure out by yourself because you don't have much context that's where you go to reinforcement algorithm it's very very high level guys this is not sufficient but just to give it a high level idea about how the things work now when you look at the machine learning algorithms because once we say the machine learning algorithms are there and you can choose based on some criteria like this what are the different types of machine learning algorithm if you want to really classify at a high level there are three types one is supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning so what is supervised learning is so supervised learning is all about like for example whatever the session now it is happening it's a supervised learning why i said it's a supervised learning is see whenever you guys are asking me a question if you are saying something i'm trying to correct like for example somebody said is the python only tool for use for data science i corrected them saying no python is not there are other tools also available but python is the one simpler enough right that right so what happened here whatever the requirement whatever the question you have you asked me and i corrected that means you have a supervisor or a teacher who is helping you to correct your mistake that's exactly supervised learning in the supervised learning what would happen is in the given data set you will have information about an input as well as output also that means every other data when you analyze you know what is the output going to come that output acts like a supervisor whereas in the case of unsupervised learning it's not like that you do not have any output data you have only input it is as simple as you do not have a teacher to teach it's like a self learning style you learn by yourself you figure out things by yourself whereas when it comes to reinforcement learning the things happen they're completely different where there will not be any teacher or supervisor like that you leave the algorithm and algorithm learns by itself by experience self driving cars is one of the best examples where based on the experience they learn and whenever they do it correctly it gets a reward and whenever they do a mistake they get a penalty something like that happens there is a reinforcement agent sits in the, in, in the in, as, as part of the algorithm and that guy does all of it so supervised learning algorithm we discussed the same thing here unsupervised learning like i said self learning reinforcement learning it is like like i said if you are like a kid when you they are doing good we will say yeah you are done and we appreciate they are doing mistake we will either scold or beat it's like a penalty so that's an example of reinforcement learning so we are done with the session and if you guys are interested in learning any of these data science or you don't know anything about python i would suggest you guys to join this course we have something called data science with python certification where actually we put foundation right from python that means this is good for people even who don't know python where we put foundation right from python and after that we will slowly take you to data science world then we will move on to machine learning it's like one course for everything python data science and machine learning uh, i hope the session help you to learn something new some foundation on what is the data science and all and uh, thank you all for your time and uh, learning something new uh, see you in some other session